Hey guys, I'm Daniela. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to discuss six things I didn't know about life in the US and initially found strange. This is part one of a series of two episodes, so make sure to watch the second one as well. I was born and raised in Bulgaria and came to the US in my mid-twenties with almost no English. Of course, my first goal was to learn the language because I really wanted to find new friends and to be able to communicate with people, but in addition to English, there were some cultural aspects that I didn't know about. Culture includes the social behaviors, norms, beliefs, arts, laws, customs, and habits of the people within a certain group. Because beliefs, customs, and habits are more abstract than language, they take a bit more time to acquire. So if you come to the US, you might face some awkward situations in the beginning. Some companies and colleges offer cross-cultural training classes, but there are still many things that no one tells you about and you need to acquire on your own. Okay, here are the six things about the US that no one had told me before I moved here. And to be honest, some of them took a while to get used to. The first one is small talk. Small talk is an informal type of conversation that doesn't involve anything important. Americans just do it to be polite. In the US, people engage in small talk everywhere. In the grocery store, in a hair salon, sometimes in the elevator, even during a job interview. To be honest, this was a little bit weird to me in the beginning because in my native Bulgaria and in Poland, where I lived before coming to the States, discussing your weekend plans with strangers was quite unusual. But here in the States, you can go to a grocery store and the cashier might ask you, how's your day going so far? Or if it's Friday, they might even ask you about your weekend plans. I remember once I was walking in a store in downtown Minneapolis when a guy approached me and said, is it cold enough for you? I didn't know how to respond because I didn't know what it meant. I didn't understand anything. But later on, I just found out that this was just a fun way to say hello to someone in the middle of the winter in Minnesota when it's viciously cold. Even if you go to a job interview, the interviewer usually wouldn't start discussing your resume right off the bat. First, they'll probably offer you some water, they might ask you if you found a parking spot, or they might even discuss something about the weather, which is a very common icebreaker here in the States. Another common theme is complimenting on somebody else's outfit. Of course, this is way more common among women and it happens in very informal situations. I remember I was walking once in downtown Minneapolis when a girl stopped me and told me she liked my sunglasses. To be honest, I really like small talk. I think it's very friendly and I do it all the time now. The next thing is that strangers smile at you on the street. So when you walk outside and another person walks towards you from the opposite direction, you'd often see this person smiling at you. This is especially common in the Midwest, but it was strange for me in the beginning because where I grew up, people don't smile at strangers. When I first saw a person smiling at me on the street in Minneapolis, I thought that I must have met that person before, but because I didn't remember ever meeting this individual, I felt awkward and anxious. Then I found out that smiling at strangers is common in the US. Okay, maybe not so much in New York, but in Minneapolis, where I lived back then, it was really common. It's just a polite way to let you know that they see you and recognize your presence on the street. And to be honest, seeing someone smiling always puts me in a good mood. Another thing that I didn't know when I first moved to the US is how much the tip. The amount that you're supposed to tip in the US makes many newcomers' hair stand on end. In many other countries, if you go to a restaurant, you tip just a little bit on the top of the check. You might leave a bit more if you're really happy with your food or service, but here you're expected to tip at least 18% on the top of your check. And because 18% is the minimum, most people end up tipping 20 and even 25%. And this happens not only in restaurants, but also in other industries like hair salons and nail salons. 
Many people who have recently arrived in the US don't know about this and leave a tip that is way below the expected one. Unfortunately, such people are perceived to be stingy, but the truth is they just don't know. To be honest, I still think that 20% is way too much, but what can I do? It is what it is, so I do it as well. Okay. This next thing I found especially challenging to get used to, and this is the difference between the price you see on a product and the price you actually end up paying. I remember when I went to a store and I liked a pair of shoes, I looked at the price and decided to buy them. But to my surprise, when I went to the cashier, the price changed. It was higher than the one written on the price tag. This is because in the US, the sales tax is not included in the price that you see on the tag and the cashier adds it when you pay. And this is different for every state. It could be even different in between different cities within the same state. So when you pay a slightly different price for the same item, if you purchase it in another town, don't be surprised. This might not be so shocking when you only have one item, but imagine if you have several things in your cart, then the difference is way more noticeable. So this is definitely an important thing to remember when you go shopping in the United States. For instance, the sales tax in California ranges from 7.25 to 9.75%, but I suggest that you find out what the sales tax is in the state you're in so that you don't face unpleasant surprises at the moment of payment. Next is wearing pajamas and slippers on the street. I couldn't believe my eyes when I first saw a girl at my school wearing pajama bottoms and slippers. Back home, no one would even dare to leave the house dressed like that. Mind you, I'm talking about many years ago, so that might have changed in a way that people are a little bit more informal. But even when I go back to visit, I don't see people wearing pajama bottoms outside. In the US, however, it's all about comfort. Of course, it depends on the state and the city. In downtown San Francisco, for example, you probably wouldn't see people wearing pajamas. But in Minnesota, the first state that I lived in, many people's wardrobes consisted of pajama bottoms, sweatpants, slippers, and flip-flops. Now I live in Silicon Valley, the entrepreneur's heaven. There are many tech startups and their dress code at work is extremely informal. You could see people wearing t-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops, but people who work in banks or other institutions, like for example in the field of marketing, wear a little bit more formal clothing. If you're new to the US and you have a job interview, I suggest that you do some research about how people dress in this particular company. Remember, it's never bad to be well-dressed, but you don't want to be the only person in a suit if everybody else is wearing jeans. Another thing that I needed quite some time to get used to is having air conditioning everywhere. Americans can live without air conditioning and let me tell you, they take it to a whole different level. On hot summer days, the air conditioning is turned up so much that it can be freezing indoors. I often see employees in Target or other big stores wearing sweaters at work. Sometimes it's not even so hot outside, but the air conditioning is still on. I personally don't like being cold. I appreciate air conditioning when it's scorching outside and I can cool down when I go inside, but I always wonder why they make it so cold that they have to wear sweaters inside. Go figure. Now that I've been in the US for 20 years, I'm so used to these things that sometimes I experience a reverse culture shock when I go back to visit my native country. Okay guys, that was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments which one of these six things surprised you the most. Also, make sure to watch part two of the topic where I share six more things with you. I'll put the link right here. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the little bell below so that you're the first one to know when I upload a new video.